Hello folks, welcome to another Two Drink Minimum Commentaries. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. With me as usual is Cameron. How the hell are you? You ready to get it on with some Bava action? Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't tell if it was a question or not, so I was a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready for some football? Or whatever that bootleg version of was in the last Boy Scout, you know? Uh, well, yeah. like, Friday night's a good time for football. I forgot. See, it popped right in my head, you know, because it was so bootleg, you know. <laughs> Sung by one of the Righteous Brothers, apparently. But um, like football is just rugby, Gary. Well, no. Come on, dude. They don't wear pads there. It's all good, man. With us as usual, uh, I had a really uh, awkward gay joke during the first intro of this show. I'm, I'm going to leave it where it lies, though. And, uh... <laughs> For the Blood Pass and Boomsticks podcast, Mr. Kyle Poling, how you doing, sir? Hello, you fucking degenerates. Ma'am. <laughs> I wore that as a badge of honor, sir. Yes. But uh, with us this afternoon, uh, Kyle has chosen a film that he has chosen to tell us all about. So okay. take it away, Kyle. So I have this weird Kyle subgenre of movies that seem to be written by a drunk four-year-old or fourth-grade class. Which means, if like, if you gave a bunch of drunk kindergarten kids and said, write me a story, and then you took that story and filmed verbatim what they wrote, and you put that out as a movie, I'm going to fucking love it. Like, some example, Spookies is, is like the granddaddy of these, like, Kindergarten, like like you can imagine kindergarten kids going, and then there's this hallway monster, and then ghoulies attack, <laughs> and then fucking mud men that fart all over the place, and then they're also killed by wine. I love movies that make no fucking sense, and you are about to see this movie knock my socks off because it's berserk. It's fucking bananas. It makes no goddamn fucking sense. First, when you watch it, it kind of... I when I saw this movie for the first time, I thought it was the movie that they were watching in Demons at the theater because it starts out like I'm like is that what they were are they watching this? But it's directed by Lamberto Bava, um the same guy who did Demons ironically. I um I think it goes he was offered a four picture television deal in Italy. So he made The Ogre, he made this, he made Dinner with a Vampire, and then another one, which I've never tracked down yet. Actually, I'm not even sure if he got to number four, but this is the uh, one of the fucking pillars of just absolute fucking bonkers shit. So I hope everybody enjoys, because this is, this is a fucking, like, this screams, I don't know why a vinegar syndrome or, you know, a label like that that just puts out like purposely batshit crazy has not jumped on this yet. And I, I swear to God, nobody has ever seen this. So this is going to be awesome. And I can't wait. Well, I love me some Baba and absolutely love me some Italian horror. So <laughs> well, you are <laughs> Thank in you. for Thank a you. fucking treat, sir. Cal, I'm, I'm sorry. Gary, you guys have never seen this, right? No. Oh, crap nope. it. Uh, Kyle mentioned but the but title of the movie, and that's fine. Uh, you're watching Grave, oh. Graveyard Disturbance. <laughs> yes, from 1986. My apologies. That's okay. Uh, you can find this on YouTube, and um, I will share the link in the show notes for you guys to watch along with us. But we're going to light this candle right about now in a three, and a two, and a one, and a go. Buckle up, motherfuckers. Kamikaze. <laughs> this is the gym from No Retreat, No Surrender, because it'd be awesome if it was. <laughs> this is the greatest van in history. Heavy metal poster. Yeah. Oh, Patrice no. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some priest? Man. Judas Going Priest. <laughs> steel. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, Gene Simmons' cousin. Could be the three phases of Sting that we don't know about. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is all airbrushed art on a van. There's the Inferno poster. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to do the, the Tony Schiavone. It's Sting for you guys, you know. It's, it's uh, Dragons Forever. <laughs> you got a friend in me. These are place uh, bikini girls. Uh, Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> That's what she was hot, brother. Because nothing screams metal like Madonna, Madonna yeah. does. <clears throat> Have you seen Madonna lately? She like blew her face up. Yeah, it's weird. She looks really strange. Yes. Yeah. He's got an ET up there. Call Willis. He stop with all the damn surgeries. Where is Willis? He, he should be here for the ET, but you know. <laughs> wait, oh. wait. What, what the hell was that? That was, that was his <laughs> Kleenex dispenser. <laughs> In his van that had an alarm clock on the dash. She found the Italian muffin section. It's right there. Oh, Patrice Ring. Mm -mm -mm. Now, what films was she in? I don't even know, brother. She uh, was in uh, Zombie 3 and, uh, geez, um, Interzone, post-apocalyptic flick. That, those only two I remember. Oh, there's the rapey guy from Demons, you know, trying, trying to get up in there. Yeah. <laughs> the rapey guy from Demons. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, that was Baba. Bob was a clerk. I was, I was going to call him not Paul Smith. Not Paul Smith. <laughs> not George Romero. Yeah. Chunky Toby Hooper. Italian rapper Downey Jr. <laughs> they call me Mad Max. Roberto Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite downy hair of all time is still back to school. Guy in the green's hat dressed like fucking Marty McFly. Yeah, for no reason. That's never explained. <laughs> <laughs> if it was explained, I'd almost be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see the mesh now. It's ruined. I see they got giant uh, yeah. roll-ups on their windows. So they stole some sausages and some chocolate. That's the... the, uh, the the, the big caper? The, yeah, the big caper here in this fucking movie. Was it raw sausage or, like, summer sausage? Like, big links yes. you see hanging <laughs> in, like, fucking windows of barber shops. Or butcher shops. You gotta put the veal cutlets inside the sauce, though, man. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Fucking Italian barberino. <laughs> Don't let that sauce... <laughs> Don't let that saw stick either. I'm, I'm staring at it. I'm staring at it. Yeah, that roadblock worked yeah. really well. They called that roadblock in for the sausage thieves. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Strategically place fog machines. Oh, oh sinister camera angles. Yeah. Every time I hear a hi hat in movies like this, I just vision that Escape from New York ripoff that I can't remember. That guy's just rocking a hi hat for twenty minutes over the credits in bombed out New York. No, there is a lot of hi hat. And, yeah, you're not wrong. That's like pan. That's like the pan drums in, in uh, Commando. <laughs> the steel drums. The yeah. steel drums. Yeah. It's like, listen, do we have leftover music from 48 hours? Well, sir, yes, I do. What is it, the rebel flag, man? There you go. Confederate we're... flag fucking big in Italy? I suppose. <laughs> I think this is an Italian movie that tries, like, throw all this American shit in it. Peter Billingsley? <laughs> Look, it's a little kid from fucking Chris, uh, Christmas Story, all grown up. Fucking Ralphie. <laughs> that that guy's gonna do something as equally dumb as stick his tongue to a fucking frozen flagpole, isn't he? <laughs> uh, all these people are very, very dumb. He, he did beat Scuff Vargas' ass, though, but not honorably, though. He just kind of bitch slapped him for a while. <laughs> 
dude, I think that's my cousin's van. That is the most righteous ass van in horror movie history. I it, swear to Christ. It is, yeah, man. yeah. It needs the water bed in the back. Yeah. No, you need Vincent Van Patten's van from Rockwell <laughs> High School. All you need is a water bed and a chemical toilet, and you got yourselves a fucking party. Go on the road, start making YouTube videos. That was, that was the name of a band I heard of before, Chemical Toilet. Like for real? Well, yeah, well, yeah, you go down to house shows, you hear a lot of weird names for bands. And yeah. it's just, I'm sure the there's weirdest. some there's some crust punk band named Chemical Toilet. I'm sure. The weirdest band I ever saw live was a band called Snoopy's Tapeworm. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sad. <laughs> Snoopy's Tapeworm. I was like, up next. I'm like, oh shit. I saw. I will be I at the saw bar. REO Speed Dealer once. Oh. <laughs> and great. I know there's a band out there called John Cougar Concentration Camp. <laughs> which is just righteous as all shit. <laughs> I think I think three of these girls have hoop earrings on, which, you know, tells you they're ready for action. We're going to get it from this ominous fucking horse drawn funeral carriage just out here in the middle of nowhere. If, if this was the driver from Burn Offerings, I'd be all over it, okay? <laughs> that creepy dude just smiles at people. Wow, it's a horse. Never seen one of those before. Looks like my mother. <laughs> Looks like my mother reminds me of my father down below. Thanks, my <laughs> parents. Yeah. <laughs> Logan, I gotta no. tell you, this movie gets a big thumbs down from Tim Gross because no one... This is Tim Gross's review of this movie. I don't like it because no one died. No one dies. And I'm like, what the fuck, Tim Gross? Okay, the the, de- the decal on his front windshield that says open, but within the open sign is a fist, you know? Does that mean yes. their buttholes are open for action for fisting? Yes. I mean... Uh... It was 86, probably. Be, be, the, be the shocker next, you know. It's... They got that off the set of Cruising. Oh, yeah. What color bandana are you wearing, boy? <laughs> Every time somebody mentions that movie, they make fun of it, and I'm like, wait, that movie is an awesome fucking movie, though. It's good. It's fucking amazing. I learned about bandana colors and what they mean from Powers Booth in that movie, and, yeah. you know, there's there's that, yeah. Powers Booth, the poor man's Michael Ironside. <laughs> Which I, I, I got that that Extreme Prejudice blue room. I'm going to watch it today after I watch this. I got mine ordered. I'm waiting. $12 is a bargain for that banger of a cast, y'all. I got that. I also ordered that um, Streets of Fire steel book from Shout when oh. they had their sale, but uh, they're slow on shipping, sons of bitches. It's never been 20 bucks for us. I said, okay, I'll buy that now. I'm trying to not buy that $40 Kindred DVD. <laughs> it's, it's sitting there, ain't it? It'll be sitting, oh, no. it'll be sitting there for a while, too. I'm sure they're going to make the non steel book $20 edition. They tricked me on popcorn. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to get tricked on the Kindred. That popcorn release was something else, though, man. Yeah, it's great. That's my favorite slasher of all time. Fucking love it. Fucking fucking Tom Villard taking away too soon, man. I always recommend people watch Double Bill, Popcorn, and Dr. Giggles. Well, Two of the that, most underrated yep. 90s slashers. Yeah. I'm, see, I'm seeing all these people that are younger than I am saying, I just watched Popcorn for the first time and it was the shit, man. You know, because they just watch it on Shudder. It is, it is, it is fine. I can't wait. I'm waiting to for Joe Bob to pick it. I know Joe Bob's going to show it one day. I hope so. It'd be perfect. I mean, I'm a fan of, of uh, The Last Drive <laughs> and anything Joe Bob does, but... yeah. The fact that he can't pick his own movies, you know, from other catalogs, is is very perturbing. I mean, to me. you got you got to take the good with the bad. You got him back. Yeah, it, I mean, you could have a whole lot like worse of yeah. a, you know, an archive to choose from. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I love I love Nosferatu and the, the seventy two version of it, but my my attention span was not there for subtitles that night. <laughs> No, I didn't watch the first one, but I, I tuned in for the Klaus Kinski. 
my attention span was not there, and I'm not I'm not a subtitle uh you know hater. I love subtitles movies, but that that night it was not there. <laughs> that late that late at night, man. I'm not up for subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> like Get the, the Judas Priest wagon. There you go, man. Dude, we're gonna we're gonna jump it. We go slow. We run hydroplane, son. Well, yeah, these crazy Italian kids got themselves into now. They got werewolves in the back and the fucking Dracula's in the front. What are they gonna do again? <laughs> <laughs> you went full Roscoe P. Coltrane instead of Waylon Jennings there, and I'm fine I know, with that. I can't yeah. do Waylon. Come on. Nobody can do Waylon. No. <laughs> Boys. That suspension is working overtime, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> No, small, you joint. Uh, smallest license plate ever. I'm no. not sure where they're going. Like, I don't even think they know where they are. They're fucking... Hey, look, it's Klaus Kinski. I was going <laughs> to say, is that Klaus Kinski? Yeah. It's the guy that knows what you did last summer. <laughs> <laughs> I know you probably saw it. I shared it in the, the Gentleman's Guide group. Uh, Werner Herzog is getting an action figure because of the, the Mandalorian, and I might have to own it. Werner Herzog should need an action figure just because he's Werner Herzog. Yeah. So you can have your own Werner Herzog to open up and play with. Just just yeah. to say funny it should, things. It should come with a bear that eats it. <laughs> I guess he really resented them for using a, a, a non-puppet for parts of the, the episode. I forget the quote, but it's kind of funny. Mm. Yeah, you didn't judge that very well, did you? You, 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 you measured, you know. Yeah. Like, where the fuck are they even supposed to be going? <laughs> do they know? Do, I mean, Does I know matter? we don't know, but do they know? I don't think so. Dude, you fucked up my van, kid. Can't get no. this wet as leather, dude. Now, there's like five of them. I think four of them could push that van out of that muck I'm just throwing out that there. That van is probably still stuck there to this day. <laughs> Some hippies living in the back of it made it a mobile camper. No, nah, that's in the middle of a lake. Hippies hate water. H- hobos fucking in it, you know. Yeah, a, a real, a real, a real soup now kitchen situation. Yeah, now it's a hobo fuck palace. <laughs> what, my fuck, man. One of the greatest cop films, probably people that people never seen the the other guys. It's, it's, uh... it's a good one. Thanks for from Dirty Mike and the Boys. Thanks for the F Shack. Mark Wahlberg acting misogynistic for no reason at all. <laughs> I, I I took ballet to to mess with the queer kid of the block. <laughs> Doing fucking full pirouettes in that movie for no reason. I love the ongoing ongoing joke that Eva Mendez is married to Will Ferrell, and oh. they play it out for so many laughs. <laughs> That's so good. Kept sending the mom out there to tell him all the sexual shit. Yeah. Come on, that's not what she said. That movie alone is worth it when The Rock and Samuel Jackson oh, jump off the roof. I'm still waiting yeah. for the prequel to happen. It ain't going to happen, but, you know, it wasn't successful. Having all this sex with women that we don't want to have. That's in that's in the um. Their line about the sticking your your arm your ass like and working your mouth like a puppet line is in my <laughs> my promo for Cinebeef that he did replace fucking five years ago. You know it's there. Oh, Klaus. Now he looks like Brian Thompson up close. Yeah, a little something on your eye there. <laughs> yeah. Fucking eye wound, Ernie over there. Like massive head wound, Harry's fucking cousin. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Dana Carvey did so many fifty cent bits on that show. It's not even funny. Yeah. Mister Death Perception. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Phil Hartman doing many 50, 50, 50 cent bits on that show too. That's a stick. Lead the way, Marty. I forget which episode it was, but I used um, the unfrozen caveman lawyer bit on a show once. 
Phil Hartman. Oh, yeah. What was the one? Frankenstein, Tonto, and... <laughs> yeah, you're just talking about, yeah. <laughs> Phil Hartman just going... Argh! <laughs> John Lovitz was Tonto, I believe. God damn, John Lovitz is a national treasure. I just love for punching a... Roy, he, he punched Andy Dick in the face, right? For, for uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I think everyone should be able to punch Andy Dick in the face because he sucks and he's not funny. Yeah, I'll second that. He's in he's in one of the only watchable uh, Pauly Shore films, I'd say, you know. All Pauly Shore films are watchable, sir. Class act being the best one, but he only has a cameo in Look, that movie. Dinosaurs. <laughs> but you didn't think there was going to be dinosaurs up in this motherfucker. Well, you you did, Kyle, but we didn't. <laughs> Spoiler alert: there are no dinosaurs in this movie. Man, <laughs> they're dinosaur prints. No dinosaurs. Though. They've been they've been fossilized. Let's put the camera up in this tree for no reason. P- play the weird Al Jurassic Park song in the background. A huge Tyrannosaurus ate a lawyer. Why did he go that way? <laughs> like, let's take the <clears throat> most resistance. Run away, he says. Let's go to this oddly shaped castle or something. Nothing bad ever happens these places. That does not look ominous at all. No. Glowing light, you know. Like that, like in, in Mausoleum. I think we did that already on this show, though. So <laughs> we can't do it again, unfortunately. Have you ever seen Curse of the Blue Lights? No. No. <laughs> no. That's what this looks like. It's fucking bizarre. They got on Esther from Sanford and Son the Mausoleum, though, so that, that gets a, yeah, two, yeah. two extra points at least, Ben. The only logical person in the whole film. Fucking old black woman. I'm getting the fuck out of here, and you never, <laughs> you never see her again, so. so. This is where I thought, I was like, is that the movie they're watching in Demons? Did he have, like, did Baba have, like, B roll, and then he just decided to make the rest of that movie? But I guess it's not. You're waiting for the guy to say, it's written by Nostradamus. Yeah. Whoever wears it becomes an instrument of evil. Oh, is it the Tombs of the Blind Dead? Oh, yeah, read the Latin. That's always good. Oh, yeah. Well, white folks got to read this shit, you know. Yeah. I hope those are, I wish those were the blind dead, because those are the most metal fucking zombies ever. That's one of my favorite parts of uh, the new Evil Dead, <laughs> was when they, the guy wrote in the margin, just, no, stop, stop reading, stop reading. And he's so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did a real Looney Tunes cartoon version of that, nope, you're going too far, oh, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, he's sexy. Look at him. Burn! Holy Damn. shit! <laughs> uh, that was extreme. So he's just a you know loser with the ladies in all his movies, ain't he? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, it's quite the ass. Is she wearing snap bracelets that she got from Shawn Michaels? <laughs> See, the girl with the glasses is the sure thing. She went for her buddy. Mm. See, She reminds me of the one chick from 90210 that wasn't Shannon Doherty or Jenny Garth. Oh, 
Get Gabriel something. Uh, and- yeah, Andrea, that- Andrea Zuckerman. <laughs> something like it. She had that fucking talk show for a long time. <laughs> She's like the president of SAG or something right now. Sweet. Oh, she, no shit. She, she got a big job. <laughs> Or she was the president of SAG. I had to look that up one time, but she's uh, she was for a long time. I guess she came out on top of the end, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's all job security right there. Yeah. Jason Priest is like, I was in Tombstone for five minutes. Shannon Doherty was like, I was in some Kevin Smith movies. Then I got cancer. Man. <laughs> no. <laughs> To be fair, she lined up after the cancer. I heard she was a real bitch before that. and I know some folks made her convention that she was very nice. And I was like, okay, that's that's different. I got fired from Charmed. They fired her from down to 2 and 0 and she could they, they replace her with a hotter girl. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Replace her with a Christina Lee's and a T- Tiffany Amber Thiessen. He looks like the brother from True Blood. He's waiting for that bad southern accent to come out of him, but he's like Australian or something. So you want hey, to baby, you'd be ashamed to waste a semi-private castle. Man. <laughs> My favorite um, Jeff Foxworthy bits where he's talking about the pregnancy and stuff like, oh, honey, be ashamed to waste a semi-private room. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, he's got a cano eye. It's a fucking Terminator. Why, why, why can't this be Michelle Suave? <clears throat> he's probably making stage fright at the time. Too early for Cemetery Men. Oh, that's a good movie. Yeah, it is. So he was on a podcast. They didn't like it. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with this person? I heard a lot of people love that movie, until, but they hate the ending. I'm like, I love it. The ending's fucking great. Yeah, the ending sells it. Yeah, he definitely looks like he's in a uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer sequel. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I want half the coat, though. He's going to steal her clothes. Do it. She's just pee on him. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, boy. Just fucking drop a Hogan leg drop on him. <laughs> <Smash>. <laughs> Drop the Macho Man axe handle on him. Well, b- b- before doing the promo, of course. Ooh, smoke. Bumpkin head's coming. What? Yeah, I think so. Then Gary gets real sad. Curse you, Lance Henriks, and your small boy. Hey, man, you didn't run over a kid with a dirt bike earlier, did you? (laughs) Jeez, I don't remember. Let's go to that smoky Letty Cave over there and see what happens (laughs) next. I mean, after all, we're only in a place called the House of the Dead. I mean, fuck it. Oh, that girl's wearing a bad wig and she's wearing a tablecloth. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Like an old Pizza Hut tablecloth. Could be worse if you were your Nana's couch. You're sleeping on top of a bar. Oh, it's, it's Miller time. <laughs> what it's, the hell just happened here? It's Miller time, yo. They found the fucking castle bar. They got Miller on tap, dude. Not just Miller, but Miller High Life, man. Yeah. The champagne and beer. They got the champagne. Wait, wait for Billy Zane to be the bartender. Come on, Uncle Willie. Come have a drink. I bless the reins at our Dick Miller. 
So he's totally trying to sell this guy that it's like a werewolf bar. I hope so. It only comes out at the full moon. <laughs> this is uh this is a slaughtered lamb. But a much more dustier version of it. Oh, it's the smoke. It's Goldberg. He's going for the streak. <laughs> Goldberg versus the Disco Inferno. <laughs> Disco fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goldberg versus Ernest the Cat Miller. Yeah, this place doesn't look suspect at all, man. No. Goldberg versus Jobber number 27. I mean, I'm sorry. Bill something. Chip Firebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> You knew they were going to lose or they were just in the ring when Goldberg came out. It, just, it, was, yep. it was over, you know. La Parca. Oh, La Parca would beat him. Yep, Parca is one of my favorite dudes. Until they say Goldberg versus William Regal, then they're like, oh shit, you know. <laughs> hey, it's the guy with the tiny hand from Scary Movie 2. <laughs> That's one of my favorite Chris Elliott bits, though. Just sticking that little hand in the mashed potatoes. Come on, take my strong hand. (laughs) Oh, God, this fucking place. Oh, their eyes are glowing, yo. Fucking demons. (laughs) Yeah, it's not peculiar at all. I think one of those guys is Irish. Let's whoop their asses. <laughs> we got Budget Velma over there with the glasses. Now, why would you do this, douchebag? Huh? Don't <laughs> reference the movie you're ripping off, sir. <laughs> Fucking Peter Brady over here doesn't like that kind of shit in this bar. We don't. We budget, don't. Budget Peter Lorre. <laughs> budget yeah. Robert Corey. We don't take kindly to you quoting scriptures in this bar. Bar. That's the tiniest mug of beer I've ever seen. Well, stumpy over here. Let me tell you, I lost this arm. <laughs> oh no, shit. No, oh, the oldest. Oh drink. shit! <laughs> that was good though. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> the old elephant truck bit. I'll break this over your head, Junior. Now I mean Junior in the good way, the Sean Connery way. The dog's name was Indiana. It's one of my most favorite endings in any movie, you know. Because <laughs> you figure out what Jesus' cup would be. Jesus was a carpenter. Let's take the wood one and take a chance. No, but my thing is, with, with Crystal Skull, you know, they claim that Marcus is dead and his father is dead. But him pouring the water on his father's wound should have gave him a uh, fucking eternal life. But, um... Right, right. He, yeah. He did. Talk about continuity with Jesus there, Indiana Jones. Bullshit. There should have been a, a side scene with a, with a CG Sean Connery saying, You gave me eternal life, and I'm a miserable bastard living on a hill all by myself. <laughs> Fuck off, Indiana. But instead we get the line somewhere your granddad is laughing. <laughs> is is this a prequel to nothing but trouble? Hey, I know you ordered sausages, but here's some cold cut sandwiches for you. <laughs> Give him that prison bologna and cheese sandwich. <laughs> You 
baloney can be a cold cut if you will it. Okay, here's where the plot kicks in. You are eating human flesh. The liver from a demon whore. I'm making my moan plot because I'm, I'm not listening to the sound because my, my recorder don't work that way. Yeah. It is, uh... I would not eat anything served to me by a man with a gaping eye wound like that. <laughs> he looked like that, uh, like that lady from The Sadness. Power. Yeah. Sorry, girl, you're already overweight and, you know, kind of awkward. You, lo you I took your eye earlier, and I'm just going to rape you. Probably in the eye wound, because they don't show it on the screen, see? Because the sadness is mean-spirited. It's thrown out there. It's like, oh, the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, you know? I've seen other stuff like it. Is it cold in Italy? They're all fucking doing the layered look right here. It's... <laughs> uh, is there a secret freak in the basement? I hope there is. Like phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically there's a pot of money and jewels and panties and credit cards that if they stay the night in the crypt for 24 hours, they win and they get that. But the crypt is the waiting room for hell. Oh, nice. So he's Ralph Richardson then, like in the Tales Kinda. from the Tribune? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, big titted Joan Collins. Here's a story about Santa Claus, your whole <laughs> wife of a husband. Is nobody not going to question this guy's glowing red eye? Mm -mm. None of these people will be like, yo, what's up with your eye? I mean, they've already insulted every other person in here. Yeah, eat your sandwich too, buddy. This is just like that scene in the Goonies. Which, you know, Corey, Corey Feldman clearly drank that fucking filthy water because he was doing the pouring the water from glass to glass thing. <laughs> it's just like very funny to me. They started singing the Bee Gees song. I started a joke. <laughs> Smartest thing anybody's said in this movie so far. Let's get the fuck out. Exit stage left. But no, we could win all these panties in, in the jar there. There's at least $180 in cash in there. Let's go some fake Mardi Gras beads that I didn't even have to show my boobies for. <laughs> if we could do all that costume jewelry, we think the pawn shop get about ten bucks for it. Ten whole dollars. Which in 1986 they filled a whole van of that 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 that, uh, that whole tank of that van we just abandoned. We got they got electricity. You think they where do they pay the power bill at, I wonder? Do they like go into town and pay the electricity bill? Yeah, good question there. They go by a train of like wild stallions. Kinda of like Zach yeah. Wild in the Aquapine episode. Getty Lee and his jet face shaped like an owl. <laughs> we'll never get back to back to West Beverly now. <laughs> I got a talk show to host. Man. See now the the case that, that embodies all the panties and the and the credit cards. Uh, oh, you gotta pay. You gotta pay to get in there. Is that how it works? Yeah. You gotta leave a donation. <laughs> you gotta leave a deposit inside the the giant yeah. serpent egg right there. It activates the robot crazy man to open the door. I think. 
This could be your prequel to Nothing But Trouble, though. I'm just throwing it out Kinda. there. Kinda. Uh, all you need is Dan Aykroyd and his bitch. Cross-dressing Dan, uh, John Candy. Can't forget Bobo and Little Devil. You really <laughs> could call this Spookies Part 2. That's a film we're going to do one day for prosperity. Just, just because. Oh, no. Maniacal <laughs> laugh. <clears throat> That's one of my favorite bits from um that first new Muppet, Muppet movie. Chris uh, Cooper doing the maniacal laugh thing. <laughs> Which, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, listeners, uh, Jason Siegel hanging out with Muppets is probably the best work he's ever done. He seems genuinely happy to be there. I would be. The Muppets are fucking great. Yeah, it seems legit. Let's do it. Plus, if I had to pick a Paul Williams replacement to write, write Muppet songs, I'd pick Jermaine Clement to do that. It'd be, free, be just fine. Am I a man? Or am I a Muppet? Get in there. Come on, Junior. The orgy's this way. There's Please. an orgy in this. Yes. Is it as good as the, the, the sadness is orgy in the park? But, you know, those guys are really getting it in. Kinda. They're uh, scissoring and just probably breaking their penises. Probably. Now, hock a loogie. Hock a good one, boy. Oh. <laughs> Go down the convenient ladder. Go down there and fight the Rancor. He's waiting for you. It's like, I'm cool, bro. Come on, man. That thing's just oozing. Ugh. <laughs> Pink guy's a bitch. I ain't got no <laughs> gear for that over in, in, in Italy. He looks like, oh, back, back to low budget cinema. The Cyclops for from Redneck Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. No, oh, one day again, guys. That, that's uh, Mr. that's Mr. Tobacco Man. Mr. Tobacco Man. Oh, that's my kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't open till Christmas. They got not Will Arnett in that movie. Dun, 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 dun. See, that's the next level Canadian tuxedo right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame to waste all that good Italian bread. Use it for the next guy. Where does he get the video screens from? Oh, they have they have high tech in this movie. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, got Betamax player over there. Man, RCA Spectravision disc player. Oh no! Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Oh, he's got a pump. This dude's ready, man. No shirt on. It's like, see, ladies, see what you're missing out on? Say, <laughs> so this is what, the poor man's red brown? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd say that. He's got the Jakota right there for her, man.
Somebody said, oh, they released the first uh, Red Brown Captain America film on, on, on digital. Well, they don't get too excited about that now. It's, it's, it's... Nope. <laughs> it's, it's about as good as that Doctor Strange made for TV movie. Hell yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that. We people, covered that last week for the show. People are real excited about that one. Well, yeah, you should be, though, because... Peter Hooten rules as Doctor Strange. Yeah. People say that, you know, and you, oh, wow, this is dumb. I was like, yeah, but it was like one of those first Comic-Con bootlegs that you bought. And uh, it always looked really terrible as far as quality goes. Kind of like the Roger Corman Fantastic Four. Oh, Ooh. that's the best one so far. If you don't count the Incredibles. <laughs> I agree. If you don't count the Incredibles, it's the best one. But I always count the Incredibles, so... I just hate the Fantastic Four in general. <laughs> I just have never liked them as <clears throat> much, dude. Best part about that movie is Michael Chiklis, the, the, the new ones. But Ch- Chicky brings always something to the table, though, so... I say, what, you haven't rewatched The Shield? What's wrong with you? You liked the shield though, but have you watched the commish? Uh, my, my father watched the commish. I never actually said watched it myself. It's like the opposite of the shield. <laughs> He's like a real milk toast guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you watch Gotham, he 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 uh he he's like a DA or something who becomes like this drug induced psycho with a metal arm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I liked him in that. I he was it was a really good Gotham. Yes, sir. Most people were though. I I, I think that people you know, talk about it how how no oh, the No One series is so good. Go watch Gotham and go sit down somewhere. It, it's it's phenomenal. It's one of the only Jada Pinkett roles I actually like. Same. <laughs> See, you want to roll for, for dexterity here. And just, just <laughs> He's going to cast Morton Kaiden's faithful watchdog. <laughs> and then next, one of the kids gets eaten by the gelatinous cube. And later on, find one of Willie's treasure. <laughs> it's our time. Our time down <laughs> it's here. It's our time down here. Martin Sheen. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my favorite Goonies line. Martin Sheen. <laughs> Dave's oh. not here. I wa- here, man. I watched Temple of Doom for no reason the other morning at work just because I wanted to watch it. That was once my favorite Indiana Jones film. Oh, that'll always be my favorite Indiana Jones movie. It got replaced with Last Crusade. Shot. We're not falling. We're crashing. I can't do the line myself. Wish she, she's uh, <laughs> screeching like Kate Capshaw in that movie. Oh God, that she's bad in that movie, but I still love oh, her. Oh God, she is not good. Her, her finest hour is in the opening scene where she's yeah. singing "Anything Goes" in Chinese. It, you know? Yeah, and then it's like they forgot that she's not very good in the rest of the movie. It's probably broken Chinese. I, I haven't confirmed or denied this, but uh, I think it's the bad guy from Bloodsport as in the opening scene of that movie is uh, the guy with the diamond. It's either Bloodsport or Kickboxer. I forget which one it is, but the head cheese of the fighting tournament is, is uh, in that movie. Fucking Dan Aykroyd's in it. This Mr. Lau. Yeah. Yeah, for a hot second. You, you, you blink and don't look the right way, you will miss them. You can recognize his voice, that's about it. 
I won a twenty dollar bet on that once. I bet a guy that uh, Dan Aykroyd was in Temple of Doom, and he's like, I've seen that movie a hundred times. He's not. I'm like, show me the money. <laughs> show me the color of your money, son. I can't tell if that guy's wearing a baseball t-shirt or like some kind of f- football club he's fond of. He's definitely Marty McFly inspired. He's got them sleeves rolled up, but ain't no cigarette pack up in there. He's like, listen, I saw American Graffiti. This will work. He's he, not in the Wanderers or anything. Oh, the Wanderers. That's a good one. He's going to go elbow titting down that fucking cave. <laughs> Leave the kid alone. Look for uh, the bonus Patreon content of Last Call of Torchies. You want to hear us talk about the Wanderers? I will say one thing that's impressive. The set is fucking magnificent. Oh, yeah. Good, because you'll see it like nine different times dressed up as something else. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> and then they entered the lair of the white worm yeah god damn you Ken Russell dance that's what we can do wait wrong wrong movie could be a dance party could be the oh you know the name of this Kyle. What's what's the dance and and uh, they have to do in in Hell Comes to Frogtown? Fuck, you can't remember. Oh yeah, something Isn't about the dance of the seven snakes or something like that. Something like that. The dance of the sacred chainsaws. <laughs> no, that's another movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like Gunner Hands like you be furniture in this movie. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> It's better than fucking being dedicated to in Death House, I guess. Ugh. This is this is God for, damn that movie. This is for Gunner. Watch this piece of shit. <laughs> what shit? So many horror people. Is this the George Harrison music video? Yeah. Um, <laughs> remember, <laughs> the, remember the, all the clocks to come alive. <laughs> I got my mind set on you video. All, all the fucking shit starts to come alive with the walls. Stuff starts coming alive here in a minute. Or, um, oh my gosh, scary. Or the um, Grateful Dead, you know, jaws moving on the skulls. Uh, touch of gray video. <laughs> Thanks for freaking us out one last time there, Jerry Bear. Ah, we get by. Nothing more fucked up than the Land of Confusion Genesis video. That's nightmare inducing. Yeah, it is. They scared the fuck out of me as a kid. (laughs) Fuck you, Phil Collins. Then you watch the Billy Don't You Lose My Number video, get really happy again. Where he's Mad Max at some point in that video. Mm hmm. Oh no, it's a hand. Oh shit. Grab her bottom. Wedgie. That Call hand tried to, that hand tried to flesh real fast. He's gonna give her the old hinder binder. Oh yeah. It's a goose. Grab it. Yeah, get full palm, nice nice dead hand. Oh, oh shit. Oh, what a jackass. It's not sexual harassment. <laughs> joking. Oh, no. He just pet cemetery that body. It's just a body. Oh, shit. <laughs> now you can freak out. Now you woke it up now. See, I imagine that, that funeral scene in pet cemetery where, you know, little gay just coughing gets knocked over. That's when he wakes up. It's a mummy mummy. You got a pretty mouth. 
Oh, you are all so yeah. fucked right now. To be fair, you guys closed it. Because you're that level of white. Check out his fangs. Is he a vampire? It's like he it looks like mid transformation, like he's an extra from Willow. Could turn to a pig. <laughs> but also a zombie. Oh yeah. You will believe you. You know Willow needed it's Gandhi. A, <laughs> Willow needed Victor Wong in that movie. Every movie needs Victor Wong. Victor Wong in the role of Billy Barty. Imagine that movie, Kyle. Yeah. The better movie. I still get excited when that, that James Horner score hits, though, in certain parts of that movie. Kevin Pollock is one of the brownies, one of our greatest living comedians that nobody talks about. Mm-hmm. I forget who the other one was, but he's very familiar, too. Should have been Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> Bobcat Goldthwait and Peter Ka- and Tim Kazarinski as the brownies in Willow. <laughs> So, if you want to go on the Wayback Machine, guys, go look up uh, our Willow commentary. My, 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 uh, Jesse Bollinger, I think one of the persons did a long time ago. It might have just been me, me and Jesse. Um, uh, was it called something about the tale of Silo Ufgood is the title of the episode? Because <laughs> we were just talking about the size of Willow's penis the whole episode. <laughs> just please. Just, just try. Please. Just try, Bob. Just, just, just pleasing women, Willow, yo. His nickname was Kickstand. Man. That's one of the greatest Austin Powers jokes ever. When fucking Vern leads over and he, he's standing up by his dick. Yeah, they fucked up your coffin, son. This is great. Oh, he's waking them all up now. That's right. Awake. Awake. He's got the touch. He's got the power. He just wants zombie what boob the? grab. He feels on her titty. That's how he woke her up. Yep. Damn. <laughs> she showed, she showed him that, that Italian pimp slap right there. <laughs> hey, why would he want to wake her up? she got herpes all over her face. Man. There's their van. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it could be their van. Or somebody else's van. There's that set again. Could be Taylor Negra's van. Just sideways. It'll be the best right now. If all those heads woke up and started singing. Like barbershop quartet style. Why, why are you touching the noses for, idiot? And they're going to wake up right about now. <laughs> All of a sudden, like we're... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was going to say, all of a sudden, we were in the middle of an eight heads in a duffel bag uh, <laughs> nightmare. Oh, yeah. They started singing those heads. I haven't watched that in forever. Yeah, me neither. It's on, it's, <laughs> it's on the list to pre-watch with, like, stuff like very bad things and shit like that. But, you know, the, the hangover was a lot. It was a lot of the very bad things. Oh, the pustules. That always gets me. Don't let, let syphilis go untreated, folks. When homegirl's, fa- Al Capone. When, when homegirl's face explodes and demons fucking gets me every time. Just hit the, that giant pulsating uh, zit yeah. on her face. Yeah. Wait, that's Rosemary. Holy shit, she's a friend of mine. You left Willie Ames alone, guys. Come on. He's back there I've hanging not, out with. He's back there hanging out with Michael Berryman and cutting run I've, somewhere. Yeah, I've not yet gained my Bible man powers. 
Bible man. Oh, he's in the drink. Now your clothes are all wet. And up from the ground came a bubbling crude. Corpses, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. <laughs> Ah, too hot in the hot tub. Too hot. What the hell is this? I'll call him back. Gonna make you sweat. Next on Celebrity Club, Celebrity Hot Tub Party, Jack Joe's Brothers. That woman has entirely too much hair. Oh, he's in the stew. What the hell? He's in there with that monster from Star Wars. Yeah. Sure, and all the garbage matches the tension level. <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't going to work. There's the eyeball again. Can you imagine how great that must have smelled? Man. Just dank-ass water. KY jelly. <laughs> He's gonna be slimy somehow. I mean, just stooge poke it. It's got a very obvious weak point. No, oh, not my tube socks. <laughs> I ain't got another pair now. Ugh. Oh, there's the boot. What are you going to do with this boot? So much slime. <clears throat> oh, it's a cowboy boot. Guess he can go one step and... Oh, were those his boots? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't wear cowboy boots and no socks on. That's a bad move right there, man. You're going to blister like a motherfucker. Got to fix your bandana. Yes, you do. Squish. <laughs> kind of sad him. He, he uh, escaped the eyeball effect there. Let's hope there's a payoff, people. Dude, those clothes are drip dry. He's barely wet at all now. Yeah. <laughs> Hair perfectly coiffed, you know. Thanks, thanks, uh, Dank Crypt, for, for all your dryness. Looks like John Goodman <laughs> from Raising Arizona, just oh, yeah. covered in grease. And shit. We came in, uh, through the main sewer, sewer line there, Miss McDonough. <laughs> We don't always smell like this. <laughs> These are some out of my cereal flakes. So I got me a job. Cutting holes in sheet metal. <laughs> Government show do take a bite. You can do this all day. Just do raising Arizona quotes. Yeah, throughout the entire <laughs> movie. My favorite quote in that movie is, I don't know, he had jammies on it, had Yodas on it and shit. <laughs> oh, nobody, great stuff. Nobody seems this house naked. Though, this is how the crate happens, people. I'm going to throw it out there. I don't think those screws existed back in whatever the fuck year this crypt was open. That's probably true. Continuity here, Baba. Continuity here. Dude, his mom dressed him for this adventure, I can tell. Got some nice slacks on. His kindergarten... He's that sweater around his neck like he's got demons. Look, he's fucking dressed for his goddamn kindergarten picture. I, I can attest to that. That's what I was wearing. <coughs> that same shirt. This is my two front teeth.
Well, the mine was open at the top like that. I, I was that much of a baller at like five years old, so. <laughs> not, not the baller that you know today, of course, you know, because I'm such a boss. Oh, yeah. Is it, is it really an Italian movie unless you get some real live maggots? No. Nah. See, now they're unscrewing, you know, because they bought those screws at the Home Depot. Somebody's got to drop a quarter and go under a grate. Yeah. That's my last soda. Oh, there's some maggots for you. Question and request answered. Oh no, it's maggots. It smells like Mons Piscatis. Yeah, you see screws ominously opening themselves. I think I'd Get fucking the fuck be out. out of there. Yeah, there you go. What are you gonna do with this fucking candlestick thing? I wait for the creature to slowly coming out of that coffin and just try to try to fucking stab it or something. What's Sid Candelabra thing? Oh, he got out. Hey. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> makes sense in that movie. This is the third time you'll see this. Yep. Yeah. They're getting the money's worth out of this location, though, guys. I'm telling you. And then they later on use this for Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah. Doom, 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 doom. I tried to watch it, the new, the reboot of it, and it was they fucking... rebooted that shit? It was fucking grown-ups, and it was weird, okay? It's like, here's grown-ups playing a children's game. Trying to make them, like, amazing race story backlines. I was like, no, don't, don't do that. Did the zombie just yawn? I hope so. <laughs> He looks that guy like, looks like uh, a Star Wars creature. Yeah, or or somebody from the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. He's Dr. Zayas if his face got melted. I mean, all they want to do is touch other zombies' boobs. Leave him alone. That's that's how you activate a zombie, I think. I guess, in this movie. You feel the boob and they wake up. <laughs> he grabbed the boob and the zombie says, Fresh. I'm with Tim. How are y'all these fuckers still alive, man? They keep escaping all these adventures. <laughs> the monsters are really dumb in this movie, but they're really cool. Yeah, I mean, the creatures are really cool looking, but they don't do anything besides cop a feel and other creatures, I guess. Yeah. So it's kind of like an 80s, oh. like an 80s bro, bro comedy, you know? If, uh, if Bachelor Party wasn't a crypt... This zombie is portrayed by Adrian Zamed. <laughs> Introduced to you? Well, your hand was so greasy, they just slipped right off, dude. <laughs> Introduce you to Nick the Dick. <laughs> just sticking his dick in the hot dog bun. Yeah, there you go. I thought it was more effective that of the dick in the hole in the popcorn. I don't know if it's... Then you got the imitation buttered flavor all over your fucking Johnson. That's not a good move, I don't think. That's a really stanky lubricant. Yeah, butter and popcorn and salt, yeah, doesn't work well. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe actual <laughs> butter, but not the imitation butter, you know. It's just, uh... But, you know, if I'm paying $15 for popcorn and a soda... Y'all should put that shit on there for me by now. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, Oops. dude, I bought a large soda at Dr. Strange last night, and it was like $9. It's like, fuck, man. Then the bathroom. You could almost buy two gallons of gas for that. <laughs> now, judging by that cough, I think Winnie the Pooh's going to come out of it. 
swinging George, man. That's who that is. <laughs> George Eastman? George Eastman, yeah. Hey, I'm alive. Like a zombie pinata. You should just hit him. He's filled with candy treats. <laughs> <laughs> zombie Dracula. It's a zombie Dracula. Yeah, these these monsters aren't really uh, like effectual, are they? No. Yeah. <laughs> the news is empty now. Y'all should be booking, I think. I'm just throwing it out there. Oh, I think this is the money shot of the movie. Does Dan Aykroyd show up? No, unfortunately. It gets, there's a really nuts part coming it's, up. Dan Aykroyd loves sausage in these movies. That's all I'm yeah. saying. He loves that German sausage. And then Digital Underground shows up with Tupac, Tupac. and Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> right? It, it might be one of the greatest films. Like people hate, people hate oh, all of them. This is, yeah. this is the money shot of the movie. This is the greatest... What the fuck is going on movie moment in history? All right, holding you to it. Uh, <laughs> man, I can't say it with Taylor Negron and, you know, Dan Aykroyd. I don't know what to sell you with. I'm just throwing it out there. Does Taylor Negron show up in this movie? Unfortunately. God no. damn it. Uh, These guys do. <laughs> Yeah, let's look. These are like, man. Fuck, I read dumb white people to death. Let's open the door here and. Hey, look, a way out. With a conveniently placed lantern. Once again, I always got to ask in these movies who lights all the lanterns and the candles and shit? <laughs> I'm guessing the proprietor of the Crypt Evil. 6. Evil! The Motel, the Motel 6 equipped with the Crypts. Uh oh. We'll leave the light on for you. Wah, 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 wah. They're walking in the sink. Just looking for my Red Rider BB gun. I went for the girl's glasses to break, and then, you know, she could see yeah. just fine without them. Black Bart. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> hey, look, cabbage rolls. Oh, what does she got the blue hell? She got multiple eyes. Oh, she's she's petting her son or something. It's little Owen. Well, it could be it could be <laughs> Tiny, Owen. Tiny Owen. Tiny Owen makes an appearance. Yes. <laughs> Tiny Owen's been. Oh, look at that jello mold. Half transformation werewolf man. <laughs> See now, cousin Eddie would love that fucking uh, that jello mold right there. I like the crunchy parts. He's got a kiss T-shirt on. He's all set. <laughs> He's got a kiss destroyer T-shirt on. <laughs> He's got Rob Halford's gauntlets on. This kid's fucking metal as fuck. Okay, who gets the big winner? The kid wins right there. I think, yeah. like the preacher when he goes half werewolf and silver bullet yeah this is like one big fever dream yeah (laughs) a little extra parmesan on my shit there we go man it's just nonsense food like in this is like that scene in hook where like hey use your imagination peter it's just a bunch of fucking nonsense food on the table just a bunch of creams and shit Mmm, chicken wings. <laughs> Got these B dubs. Run away. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> nope. See ya. <laughs> And back down that same set again. And that's all you'll ever see of those dudes. <laughs> it's like, there's something we don't see every day. <laughs> I 
I opened the door to Midian for a second. Right. That's a film I couldn't get into. I, I've tried multiple times. People love Nightbreed. I just don't see it. I love it. It's oh, I love me some Nightbreed. My, my biggest problem is that I can't root for Craig Shepard because he's so fucking terrible in that movie. My problem is there's not four sequels. <laughs> All with different versions of that Johnny Come Angry song. Mm-hmm. This little rat kid, he was wearing a Kiss Destroyer shirt, and he escaped into a fucking coffin. It's fucking so metal, man. And we all went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. They're all way too calm for this shit. It's like the shit we just seen, I'm just tired now. Let's lay it out and see how it plays out. And then there was the Star Wars trash monster. She got some LA gears on, just rocking. Yes, she them. does. Man, she bought them because Carl Malone said so. Man, it's like folks bought the ruse because WCW and Walter Payton said so. <laughs> Buy some ruse. You need tiny pockets in your shoes. I think I owned a pair of second-hand ruse at one one spot in time. That and second-hand British Knights. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have no LA gear catapults. No, I didn't have LA gear catapults. No, I did have some Reebok pumps. I thought were not going to take me anywhere, though. I, did, uh... I had broken Reebok pumps. <laughs> that if I moved my foot in a certain way, it sounded like a frog. <laughs> like just. <laughs> They were called my froggy shoes, and I used to drive the reading teacher crazy in eighth grade. And she only had one hand, so I was a real asshole. Was she frog dreaming? <laughs> was she frog dreaming like Henry Thomas? Uh, ironically, she was a reading teacher named Mrs. Story, <laughs> and I used to torment her with froggy shoes. Froggy shoes and donkajins. One day we'll do Donka Jen on this show, I promise, Kyle. Oh, it's it's such a great fucking movie. I'm still convinced nobody knows what that movie Nobody's ever seen that movie. Brian, Tr Brian Trenchard's Miss Children's film, supposedly. It's fucking great. I just saw Henry Thomas' uh, this past weekend, too. I should have mentioned it, you know. All I, all I could mention was how excited I am about the new Cloak & Dagger Blu-ray coming out. You know? Oh, shit, I've seen that. <laughs> I I pre I pre-ordered that bitch. I have not seen that movie in fucking years, but I remember I used to watch it as a kid a lot. Vinegar Syndrome is dropping some shit. That's like, are they fucking serious? Like, I guess I have to have this now, you know. So I pre-ordered that and the the Miami Con Connection uh, Blu-ray the same day. Which they should be coming to my house pretty soon. I think it's right around the, the time they have their big sale, the halfway yeah. to Black Friday sale. I didn't order Thriller because I'm not a big fan of that movie. They they call her One Eye. Yeah, I've I've had that for a while. I don't need to replace that one. Or upgrade, as the hipsters say. Doesn't need a 4K. Nah. Good movie though. And they all start to come to life. These skulls. Wall of bone. Tap one black mana to regenerate. I'm getting readings above and behind. <laughs> Through the fucking walls, man. Now, if they started to come to life like the fucking aliens, I'd be all over this. Yeah. It totally turned into like the county fair spook ride right now. <laughs> Ooh, some glow in the dark paint. Yep, oh, there we go. Fuck, bro. Dude, this is like Legends of the Hidden Temple. Mm hmm. Now into the shrine of the silver monkey. Just fucking temple guards shooting out of the back doors, molesting children. Yep. 
knocking the living shit right out of them. <laughs> They're like, boogity, 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 boogity. I mean, they were rough with those kids. Oh, this guy's got a Swiss Army knife. He's all good. Come on, pick the lock, pick the lock. Fuck, this one opens the beer. Or is that the can opener? I forget which one, but... this is, He's an expert locksmith, apparently, with that thing. All you need is a flathead screwdriver out of a Swiss Army knife, and you're gold. Flathead or... Defeats uh, any Italian zombie movie. Or the corkscrew, maybe. But you know, I never got the, the idea of giving a child a knife with a corkscrew on it. It's just like, hey, Scoutmaster, where's that special juice you had before? <laughs> I was on my paper route once when I was in like sixth grade and I found a Swiss Army knife wrapped up in $800 in this guy's backyard. <laughs> I said, this is mine now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big fucking wad of money stuck in the ground. That's, Swiss Army knife in the middle. I still have it. That's better than finding porn in the woods right there. Everybody finds porn in the woods. Can you find porn in a crypt, though? Anything's possible in a graveyard. You just heard it. Cause look, look at homeboy's pants. They're so perfectly white. You're going to win the grand prize. You get that, that, that four day, five nights uh, trip to Orlando, Florida. Go visit. Where they were already at. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, it's like uh, Price is Right. You get to fly over from Burbank to beautiful Ireland. You know, you get to live in California to get these prizes. Mm hmm. They're going to beautiful Scandinavia. Going through the time of the, the Festival of Midsommar. Watch old folks drop from cliffs and break their necks. Later on, you'll have fine cuisine, including pube pies. That's right, eat that shit. That's the best romantic comedy of that year, in my opinion. <laughs> Midsummer. We gotta stop here, you know. The hordes of the undead have been grabbing boobs. We gotta stop to play a little grab ass in the fucking cemetery. Oh, yeah. Just you know, just uh, stopping Marco. the stopping the gravity of the situation of the shit they saw. By all rights, every single one of these people should be dead by now. For sure. Seriously. I think nerdy uh, Catherine Mary Stewart's really turning me on right now. Why? I mean, both these girls are wearing some serious mom jeans. <clears throat> but why Why do they look sexy in mom jeans? And now that mom jeans are back, every girl looks really gross. Thank you, Marissa Tomo, because some folks can pull them off, some folks can't. God damn it. Yeah. Marissa Tomei could pull them off. Because she's a mom. Well... All I see is those boobs in slums of New York. Some slums of Beverly Hills, I'm sorry. Like, yep, there they are. Marissa Tomei's boobies. Without the piercings, like in The Wrestler. <laughs> Just dumping happy in that movie. Fuck you, bitch. Hey. Fuck you, M.A. Happy Hogan needs some love. She's like, he's too clingy. You're like, typical woman. Come on now. <laughs> he loved you too much. Why would I'm just going to sit here on this coffin. Yeah, why would you sit on the coffin when you just seen some fucking... Yeah, the dinner party, if you will. All them slugs and snails are going to waste now. Spicy tuna rolls, perhaps. <laughs> I 
Dude's got some chucks on. That's a bad move for this scene right here. Yeah, it does. That's uh. And the cops are still after him for saucy thievery. <laughs> Well, you they stole like twelve dollars of chocolates, man. I mean, man, huh? you need the bumbling cops because you know that made that made last house in the left work so well. But you know that movie and um, the town that dreaded sundown that always takes me out of it with the bumbling cops. Yeah, but somebody gets killed with a trombone in the movie, so I have to, I have to respect that. The trash, the coolest van. That's how they're going to find him. They still wouldn't find one eye Willie's rich stuff, though. Nope. It's like, dude, you're fucking way too into this shit. But, dude, we're going to get laid, I promise. They stole that from Elvira's house. <laughs> Break the mirror. Big metal cross right there. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like they're in Freddy's Chapel from part four. Oh, yeah. Minus the dog piss. But there might be some dog piss in there, too. I don't know. See how this puzzle works? You gotta stomp on the stones in a certain sequence, and then the door Mm -hmm. opens. Yeah. Or you don't win that trip to to, to Orlando, Florida. Well, you go to Nickelodeon Studios... They're going back down now again. Well, sometimes, uh, sometimes <laughs> down is out. You know, that's how the show works, Cameron. And head was the hidden temple. <laughs> they take the right path. They chose poorly. Are you ready, Olmec? Let's rock. We go down any farther, we reach China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We see my relatives. Oh no, somebody oh. fall down. Is he okay? No, he's just a little stoned. <laughs> uh, Jeff Hardy just jumped off the ladder. Oh God, that guy's got a family. There you no, go, she broke her glasses. No, she broke her glasses, yes. She looks like she aged 30 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, she didn't break her glasses. No, they're just a little dirty, that's all. Hey, look at that. Oh, budget Velma is okay. See, budget Velma would have been crawling to look for those glasses, then when she found them, mm-hmm. she would have seen a monster. Which is obviously Old Man Withers from the music, the guy that owns the music park. This abandoned Santa's Village exhibit. Or Kitty Land, wherever you guys had, wherever your, your regional uh, shit theme park was. Hey guys, we found that set again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have one of those, like, bootleg Great Americas for children uh, around where you guys live? Well, Cameron lives in Illinois, where I live. I'm sure he's been to. Yeah, we got one oh, called yeah. Indiana Beach that sucks real bad. Oh, yeah, I've been there before. Oh, that place is gar- garbage. I used to go to Indiana Beach all the time when I lived in Indiana, and I don't think I ever had fun once. <laughs> I mean, they had a cool haunted house, but that was about it. I had a cool arcade. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had a shooting gallery. They had Twilight Zone pinball machine, if I remember correctly, there. When I was younger, that's one of the best. I put I put a bunch of quarters in that fucking thing. 
I still see them, and I want one for my house, but, you know, they're very expensive. And the maintenance of that thing is astronomical. Uh, my buddy Josh bought uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street pinball machine for 500 bucks. Nice. Works a great and everything. That's a like, great... Except for the, the little Freddy glove doesn't work quite like it should. Which one had the gun? Was it was it the Guns N' Roses pinball machine had the oh, gun for the, the, the trigger? Terminator, I thought, mm-hmm. had a gun, didn't it? There was the Aer- Aerosmith game that had the gun. Oh, the Re- Revolution it? X as a, as a game? Rebel- yeah. Huh. Oh, where you fought with music and the shot CDs <laughs> and things? Yeah, that was dumb. I threw so many quarters into that goddamn machine. That's for Revolution X and the, the Terminator 2 arcade game were the same game, just different characters. Oh my god, I lost so much money in that game. It's fucking ridiculous. I think the thing I spent the most quarters on was the Simpsons arcade game or the X-Men arcade game. Yeah. Back when you had the fucking giant cabinet, you could play six players at a time on that X-Men. Welcome one. to die! <laughs> that one? Yeah. Somebody had to be Dazzler. Fucking sad bitch. Nightcrawler kicked ass in that game. Yes, he did. But Dazzler will always be shit. Like Banshee. Yeah, big Avengers cabinet like that. Always played Hawkeye. All right. I think Vision was in there. Captain America, Hawkeye, and I forget who yeah. else. Yeah. Maybe Iron Man. Iron Man was. You try to heart punch that guy. <laughs> you just try to pull a Kali Ma. <laughs> it's too bad we haven't had a hip toss in this movie yet. Oh, it's not over yet. We did have Tiny Owen, though. Tiny Owen did show up. Fucking metal Tiny Owen. In rat, rat form. <laughs> Finally, the fucking sun is coming out over here. Doom, 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 They're finding the way out of the legend hidden temple. Are they? Hey, there's the guy with the with the crazy eye. Hey, guy, we made it. Yeah. Later on, we'll go fight a kaiju instead of a giant robot. One of the greatest Rick and Morty's ever. The the bootleg uh, Voltron episode. Where Rick had to own all the ones from the different, different quadrants. To make make a mega, uh, oh, were they like gopher trons or some shit? Gopher trons, yeah. Oh, so good. That the Hellraiser episode. I have a confession to make. Huh. I've never seen one episode of Rick and, Morty, or Rick and Morty. Well, I have the my voodoo account, and look look for the Hellraiser when you laugh your ass off. Okay, it, it's. It's just I think it was, you know, it was several seasons in by the time I, like, discovered it. And I'm like, nope, I'm not you, making the commitment You yet. don't need to follow Rick and Morty. You can just watch certain episodes. You know, I could... Pickle Rick. Pickle, <laughs> Pickle Rick is a thing, yes. Oh, they found the rich stuff. But it is cursed. And they got underwear. They got the Yay. panties, yeah. There you go. Put them on your head, son. You want to sniff them old panties. Sniff them. That's where COVID came from, guys. <laughs> Man. He's <laughs> <sighs> got his slicker back on against me. means business. Why are you wasting the coins for? Oh, what are you going to do? Mission Impossible? Dun, 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 dun. Excuse me why I tear my face off. <laughs> oh, what's this? This is a tie-in, so it's going to be weird. 
Oh, oh my god. <laughs> from me. You gonna unhinge his jaw and eat a rat? Yeah. No, man, it's fucking boy from, from Little Monsters. <laughs> fucking rotten pumpkin face man <laughs> that scene is still fucking terrifying i don't know what's worse uh boy or rick duke with a hunchback in that movie yeah but, uh, you watch a little monster that kid like well that's kind of fucked up and you watch as an old, older person like wow that's kind of fucked up still i can see why i was terrified of that of hey bud that's uh, all i remember about that movie <laughs> oh yeah hey just... bud just trying to figure out like why they're not a lot more concerned right now. <laughs> Man, he just ripped his face off. <laughs> you are the big winners. Why are you? Why are you wearing that shit? Two snakes that face each other. Why would you? Why would you do it? What? Talk to the fucking corpse guy. I can't even hear what you're saying, but there's something amazing. Some kind of exposition. Whoa, he's got a scythe, yo. He's the Grim Reaper. <sighs> I doubt it's very sharp, though. But it is powered by Satan or something, so it should be good. Good and sharp. Not dull at all. You're giving away too much exposition. And why are you wearing a tiara? You're going to die in a tiara. See what happens there? <laughs> why are you wearing that? I want to be an Egyptian princess when I grow up. That's why. Which which is really what Johnny from the outside wanted to be, but he, he got burnt up or something. So, it's, it's, yeah, he was going to yeah. be an Egyptian princess. So he could constantly stay gold. By wearing gold. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain. They took two bars of chocolate. Two. Two. There's nobody inside. Oh, he's got a dagger. Isn't that fancy? Eat it, corpse. Yeah, that'll do you. That wasn't a prop knife, sir. Fuck. <laughs> Much like the Grim Reaper in Spookies. Fucking weak as shit. Just Cause... dies. <laughs> Just fucking gone. You know, I know he's dying. His eyes are glowing red like in the video game. Yeah. <laughs> His whole body be glowing red, though. Cue the city lumber. I don't get why he's, why he's just wearing that, like, false of doom headband. Two snakes. That and face they each other. all get arrested, and it has a Monty Python and the Holy Grail ending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. And the cops rip them off. Well, naturally. You are you are in Europe, after all. They get arrested anyway. All this for some chocolate and sausage. See, it would be the best is if the corpse was driving the car. The Grim Reaper corpse. Yeah. And we're going to take your women. There you go. Yeah. Your... <laughs> that was a great adventure. We'll do it next summer too, right guys? Yeah. Oh, where's, where's Midget? Uh, where's Midget Tiny Owen? He's in the back there somewhere. No? God damn it. <laughs> All because don't steal sausage and chocolate, kids. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. Sauce and chocolate stealing is bad, brother. But, uh, graveyard disturbance. Ooh. I'll ask Cameron first. What do you think of it? What do you give it one to ten? <laughs> uh, how long do we got here? Um, <laughs> this movie was crazy. And, uh, thank you, for Kyle, for, <laughs> uh, fucking nuts. one at us. It's nuts. It's not anything that I would have expected. Uh, you know, a little bit of the crazy, you know, uh, effects and gore that I've come to expect from a Bava film, but, yeah, it uh, it made no sense. It was completely uh, idiotic. Uh, the characters were stupid, and I loved every fucking moment of it. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I give this movie a solid seven and a half for just for just throwing me on my ass and just taking me for a loop. I, I loved it. It, it, it was the, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but God damn it, I love it. Kyle. Oh, this is a 10 out of 10. I love this fucking movie so much. Fuck Tim Gross. I don't care what he says. People don't die in this movie. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Just for that, just what? Like every five se- every five minutes in this movie, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Legitimately, I love it. Yeah, be- best episode of Legends of Hidden Temple ever, children. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful. You're not um, wrong. Uh, crazy monsters for no reason, having dinner parties and shit, and Tiny Owen with jagged teeth and the Kiss t-shirt on, the Rob Halford gauntlet just hanging out. Uh, oh, man. It's it's stupid. It's stupid fun, though. I hope you guys are watching with us on the YouTube link that I sent. And, um, you need to treat yourself. Go watch something stupid, and this is this is a, one of those great exceptions to to a rule to say I need something with substance. That's Italian, you know. You just need something with oozing monsters and a infected eyeball hanging out, and they get sausages. their rich, sausages, and they get the rich stuff at the end, but they get the rich stuff taken away from them, and oh man, it's, it's so much fun. It's 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 a I'm with Cameron. That's seven and a half out of ten. It seems seems astute, you know, and I'm I'm gonna go with that too. Um, fair enough. Fair enough, man. Uh, if I can find the next Baba film, we'll, we'll do that next. But if, if not, it's either going to be... What, what's the film called, Kyle? Oh, Dinner with the Vampire. Dinner or with the Vampire. With or, vampire. Or Dinner yeah. with the Vampire. One, one of the two. Yeah. We'll do that next, or you're going to hear The Visitor next. One, one of the two. Oh, shit. Super Space Jesus. Yeah, so you hear, you'll hear one of those two next. Nice, nice. Uh, on two trick two commentaries. But um, you got something to push, uh, I'm sure. Cameron, buy a whole bunch of shit. Go for it, brother. Oh, I'm uh, midway through our uh, Rucker Howard Appreciation Month there at uh, Cinema T Generation. We got about four episodes in. We got <laughs> seven more episodes to go, so it may carry over a little bit into June. But you know, it's a little extra for Rucker Howard Month. Uh, I got some special uh, interviewees that I'm going to have on for uh, Howling at the Full Moon. I got a couple of directors lined up for some special episodes. I don't want to announce who yet just in case somebody backs out but i'm pretty excited uh for the howland Thwone moon shows but uh you can find cinema degeneration anywhere you get your podcast we're pretty much available anywhere and everywhere cool kyle i've got a really dumb podcast you can find that at bloodbathspodcast.blogspot.com and this and that's about it i don't really do much I just watch weird Italian movies. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Nope. Man, you hear all my stuff under the bush, the butcher shop banner on uh, your, your podcatcher, respectively. That's the beef podcast burning for Springwood. This show you listen to right now, last call of torches and whatever else I may put out. You can find it all there. Um, like subscribe, Donate to the Legion Patreon. You make us something bonus from us one day, and you, you won't even know if you don't don't you don't donate to the Legion Patreon. Low two dollars a month to uh, build to you guys, and you can hear all our bonus torchy stuff on there. Which next time around we're doing uh all the Walter Hill directed uh, Tales from the Crypts. So those are some good good episodes in there. I remember two of them being very fond of them. I'm not sure sure about the third one, but um you get William Sadler in there killing people and. You get Kevin Tige and Elias Henriksen playing cards for for body parts and the one of the other ones. So, good shit. But um, that's it for me. That's it for us. See you guys next time for one of those two movies mentioned before. Uh, thanks for listening. This has been your two drinking minimum commentaries.